The city of Arnsberg Neheim is located at the gateway to the province of Sauerland. Here, on September 21st, 1904, Franz Stock was born as the first son into a large blue-collar family. Franz Stock was baptised in the church St John the Baptist. Since the end of December 2008, believers and all who honour Franz Stock can find in this baptismal chapel a place to commemorate him, a priest who, during the worst times of World War II, was a symbol for peace and reconciliation amongst people. Stones from Paris, Chartres and Arnsberg lie at the foot of five poles, each of these symbolising the wooden poles where prisoners were executed. There is also a painting, a Pieta, created by Franz Stock himself. Franz Stock grew up in a religious family. His childhood was relatively unspectacular, except for the fact that Franz decided to become a priest when he was only 12 years old. Influenced by his mother, who was strict but filled with integrity, he developed an extraordinary sense of duty, which followed him throughout his life. In his childhood home, Theresia Stock, Franz's sister, remembers his youth. What did family life in his home look like? Es war sehr lebendig. Es waren viele Kinder da und die it was very lively. There were many children. And his siblings managed again and again to invite other children into the house. Fellow pupils, children from the neighbourhood, friends. Everything took place in this house. Franz was an average student. Soon, however, he joined a clerical youth movement, the so-called Quickborn. After his final exams, he realised his dream to become a priest, studying theology at the priest's seminary in Paderborn. Easter, 1928. The student Franz Stock went to Paris to study theology for three semesters, where he was the first German student of theology between the two world wars. He loved the French language and the culture of his neighbouring country. He became acquainted with the Compagnon de Saint-François, founded by Joseph Follier, and wandered with them all through France. In Bierville, where in 1926, Marc Saunier encouraged more than 10,000 young people with the words, French and Germans, we have to conquer hatred. The conviction ripened in Franz Stock that both countries should live in peace with each other. His journeys took him from the Alps of Savoy, via Paris, all the way to Luxembourg, and this always in the spirit of reconciliation. His mentor, Joseph Follier, was always with him. Paderborn is not only the city where Franz Stock studied theology, but also where he was ordained a priest in 1932 by the Archbishop of Paderborn, Dr. Caspar Klein. One can find photographs of his ordination in the private family photo albums. For the city of Neheim, Stock's ordination was an extraordinary event. People celebrated with him and all the children wished him God's blessing for his priesthood. With these blessings, he went on to become a chaplain in Anrüchter Effeln and Dortmund Ewing. It was here that he even translated passages of the Bible into the Polish language for Polish coal miners. This cross is located on top of the Borberg, a mountain near Brilon. Today, the Borberg is a place of pilgrimage in commemoration of Franz Stock's peace meeting in 1931, where he also joined Joseph Follier and his compagnon de Saint-François. Here, young people from both Germany and France congregated to talk about peace in the world. In 1931, however, shortly before the takeover of power by the Nazi regime, the atmosphere among the German people was already resentful. The activities of the Christian youths were watched with mistrust. The Nazi press described it as a communist meeting on sacred Germanic ground. 
Franz Stock already felt that the peaceful times might soon be over. Paris, the city of his dreams. When Franz Stock was ordered to become the principal rector of the German Catholic community in Paris, he accepted without hesitation. The city of art. Franz Stock loved art. He even had the opportunity to prove his qualities as a painter. Many of his paintings, also from Brittany, a French region he loved so much, can be seen in his birthplace in Arnsberg Nieheim, which, in the meantime, has become a memorial place. Rue Le Mans is located near the Pantheon, the National Hall of Fame of the French. Here, in the 5th arrondissement, the German Catholic community had its residence. Not much has changed there since then. In the white building there was a home for young German and Austrian women looking for work in Paris, who found a provisional shelter there. Franz Stock led the community, supported by his sister Franziska. It was a happy time. Franz Stock organized sightseeing tours and performed plays at a community hall used as an amateur theater. He even showed movies while his sister Franziska discovered the neighborhood together with the girls in the home. Paris magically pulled Franz Stock in. He was not only a priest by vocation, but also a serious artist, an aesthetic who painted and wrote books. But in this city he was to experience unimaginable suffering, which made him, whom the French called their Abbe Stock, the pastor of hell. This man, Adolf Hitler, invaded France in 1940 and occupied Paris. It did not take long until the first Frenchman, Jacques Bonsargent, became a victim of the Nazis. A random victim, as it later turned out, simply to make an example. The prisons of Fresnes, La Santé and Cherche Midi filled up with resistance fighters, communists, Jews and presumed spies. Abbe Stock was appointed auxiliary post-chaplain and thus also became responsible for the French prisoners. He managed to gain their trust and helped whenever he could, even endangering his own life by smuggling books and news into the cells and reporting to the prisoners' families about their fate. Abbe Stock's vestment and the mask kit can be seen today in the Friesikenhof in arnsberg Neheim as part of a permanent exhibition, which also includes original documents. Abbe Stock's activities in the prisons were impressively documented in the paintings of Sieger Kurder, a fellow priest, and considered to be one of the outstanding painters of Christian art. His works can be found in the chapel of the German Catholic community in Paris. the prison in Fresnes. From here, trucks took Frenchmen sentenced to death up to Mont Valérien, a hill near Paris. In those trucks, the condemned prisoners sat on their own coffins. Mont Valérien, with its impressive memorial, is today one of the most important places of collective commemoration for the victims of German Nazism. Here, on the clearing, stood the wooden poles, to which the prisoners were tied before being executed. Almost daily prisoners were murdered here. Franz Stock accompanied the condemned prisoners until their last breath. He consoled them and heard their confessions. He made no distinction between Catholics, Jews or atheists. Those who visit the small chapel on Mont Valérien today will find the tokens of that horrible time wooden poles pierced by the bullets of the firing squads and the wooden coffins in which the bodies were carried away. In 
In his diary, Franz Stock documented the chronology of the executions with all the personal data of the executed as well as their grave numbers. With all its facts and numbers, this diary would appear to be nothing more than a mere record. It is, however, a record of untold suffering. For many people, the fact that the place in front of the monumental memorial on Mont Valerien is named after Franz Stock is a wonder of reconciliation. After the end of the war, Franz Stock himself became a prisoner of war. During his stay in the prison camp in Cherbourg, his paintings reflect the prison life there. And here, an unusual call came his way. He was to become the warden of a prisoner camp in which German seminarians, taken as prisoners from all over France, were concentrated. The camp was located near Chartres, a city world famous for its Gothic cathedral. This camp seminary was close to the cathedral in Le Coudre. The French reasoning behind this seminary was to let young people study there, so that they would later return to their home country as priests with Christian convictions, filled with the desire for peace and freedom in order to denounce as criminal the inhuman Nazi idolatry. Later, it would be named the Barbed Wire Seminary. Film shots of life in the camp show prisoners during their studies in the shadow of the watchtowers or attending the lectures of Franz Stock. On several occasions, the then papal nuncio Roncalli, later Pope John XXIII, visited the camp, which was adopted by the University of Freiburg. All in all, 949 lecturers, priests, brethren and seminarians attended this camp. Some priests were even ordained there. Former camp guard, Abbe Ferdinand, remembers Franz Stock. J'étais en effet attiré par ce prêtre que j'avais rencontré à plusieurs reprises dans le camp. I met this priest several times in the camp, and I felt attracted by him. Why? Because I felt a kind of holiness emanating from him. First it was his look that attracted me, which always reflected the misery of those Frenchmen and foreigners who he had accompanied to the wooden poles of execution. En accompagnant le chiffre, nous ne le connaissons pas exactement. Lui-même le connaissait-il sans doute pas. 1500 ou 2000 Français ou étrangers, mais surtout Français probablement, au poteau d'exécution. Son regard restait marqué. His look remained marked by this, a look full of goodness, full of tenderness, but also a suffering look, and I recognized immediately a certain holiness in this look. C'est son regard finalement qui m'a surtout attiré. Et puis très rapidement, j'ai découvert chez lui une certaine sainteté. Stock painted the camp chapel with frescoes. Although badly damaged, they have in the meantime been restored. The warehouses are now also being renovated. Here, the European meeting place Franz Stock is being established. It is one of those rare places representing the German-French reconciliation. With this meeting place, the Franz Stock associations in France and Germany are creating a place of remembrance, as well as of hope in Europe. The barbed wire seminary was closed down on June the 5th, 1947. These documentary pictures show Franz Stock bidding farewell to his co-prisoners returning home, 
The story of this seminary is unique and a token of German-French reconciliation. This place too is named Franz Stock Place. It is located in front of the church St. John the Baptiste in Chartres, in which Franz Stock found his final rest. A memorial remembers this priest from Germany, who was honoured by a German Chancellor. The inscription on his tombstone, however, has an almost historic dimension. Peace for Franz Stock, priest of the Diocese Paderborn, 1904 to 1948. Pastor in the prisons of Rennes, La Santé and Cherche Midi, 1940 to 1944. The grateful families of the prisoners and executed Frenchmen. After the closing of the barbed wire seminary, Franz Stock returns to his beloved Paris. In this hospital, he took care of wounded German soldiers. However, all that he had lived through over the last years, the suffering and the desperation, all that took a toll on his own health. And so he was admitted to hospital himself, and he died there at the age of 43, much too soon. He, who consoled so many people, remained alone and abandoned at his end. Pope John XXIII wrote these words, which ensure that Franz Stock remains unforgotten. The priest Stock is not only a name, it is a program. A film by Hans Peilo, commissioned by the Franz Stock Committee for Germany. Translation, Lori Bem and Wolfgang Dürrer. Narrator, Julian Harley. Copyright, 2012.